components of our cello tar sandwich. So now, we just need to start gluing them together in the correct order. What is that? Let's find out. Okay, so you have to think of the cello tar like a two-story building. Or a four-story building, really. <coughs> because the way that this is assembled is you have you have your bottom floor, which is the back. <clears throat> then your second floor is the structural oak part that goes from the front to the back. And then the pine wings occupy the second and third floors of the building. Greedy, greedy little guys. <clears throat> the third floor proper is occupied by the neck riser, tail riser, and the bevel material block, let's call it. <clears throat> and finally, the fourth floor or top floor of the building is the top of the instrument. <clears throat> so, the trick here is everything has to be glued to everything else. Um, <clears throat> but, <clears throat> we also need to be able to do a routing pass on this, this layer is everything but the top. So, since that's the last thing we want to do before the top goes on, let's say the top will be last. Back's alignment with the core is not super critical. I mean, it matters, but it's really not, it doesn't need to be that precise. I need to go back and sand off that wood filler there. Um, so let's say the back is the step before the top goes on. All right, so <clears throat> the trick here now is the pine wings have to glue on to the second and third floors of the building. And the, but those second and third floors have to be perfectly flush on the left and right edges or else we are sacrificing the beautiful production straight edges that we got by cutting the tread and sizing everything the way we have. So, it would suggest <clears throat> that we need to have a degree of simultaneity in all these being glued together. The only thing I'm worried about is the neck riser because it needs to align with the top um, on terms of the neck fitting with those two layers. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the neck riser out <clears throat> and let's say that either gets glued on at the same time as the top. Uh, yeah, that gets glued on the same time as the top. Can you tell that I have this all worked out ahead of time? Ha, gotcha. I'm making this up as I go. Um, so I, I always usually just kind of built these, <coughs> uh, built these instruments just, you know, on a whim in my garage with borrowed time between other things. <sighs> so all the, uh, having order of operations figured out, having real templates, all that jazz, you're benefiting from that, but I am not really going to ever see it because <clears throat> I'm building this as a test to see if I can get through the templates and get the processes nailed down for you. So, you're welcome.
What can I say except you're welcome? Great song, Dwayne Johnson. Good job, buddy. <clears throat> okay. So let's look at let's look at how the top sits on here again. <clears throat> so don't really need this bevel wood until about there. <clears throat> Considering whether or not I should leave an air gap here so that this doesn't have to match perfectly. Well, it doesn't really have to match perfectly anyway, so never mind. That's fine. Um, just uh, mark this guy's position. question at hand is, how do we glue all these disparate pieces together simultaneously? So what I have is I have four big primitive C-clamps. Um, and those four big primitive C-clamps are the slow kind because uh, I was on a shoestring budget when I outfitted myself for all this stuff. The good type of clamps, the fast ones, allow you to just like press a trigger and slide it in, lock it into place, and then just tighten the last couple turns. These, you actually have to manually screw and unscrew every single turn. So they're slow. Um, but they've served me well. Built many a cello tar and done other crazy stuff with them. So <clears throat> I shouldn't complain. So what we really need is we need a way to hold these center pieces together so that they are flush with all the bits they should be flush with. Um, but what we don't actually need, is we don't actually need to glue the sides on yet. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm second guessing myself about, about this guy. So, so yes, I'm gonna glue the neck on by itself. <clears throat> so now, lining the pieces, tail riser, drip of a line on the inside, so now that goes. Got this guy, got a line on the front and the back, so we know that goes. <clears throat> now for side wings, which we are not going to glue on, but we're going to use them to center the crap out of these things as we lock them down with <clears throat> the clamps. So, wood glue. Wood glue max. Bond stronger than wood. This claims that the bond created by this glue is stronger than the bond of the wood to itself. That is strong. So, sounds good. Let's do that. Um, okay, so, scoot my wings away for a second. Put some glue on this side. Have your paper towels handy and ready because you clamp clamps down, this wood glue is going to squirt out everywhere. This is what it does. Okay, so that's roughly aligned and in place. Now, now glue here. Yes, we're just going to be gluing things together for quite a long time here. And the glue takes a while to dry. Like 24 hours. So, what does that mean? Well, 
I rented Justice League. <laughs> uh, so I have something to do tonight. Well, this drive. I uh, here it's terrible, but you know, I really like Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. I really like Henry Cavill as Superman. Hottest dude ever. I don't know. I wouldn't be ashamed to admit it if, if there was, but there is no homo there. But man, he is, he's an attractive man. His physique is amazing. Um, okay, so what do we got here? Well, we got clamps. We got things to clamp. So I have four clamps. So I'm gonna put two back here. And the reason I'm not using the plywood shims is because neither of these surfaces are going to be visible. Um, it's, it's going to be the inside of the top and the inside of the back. And you're never going to see either of those. So it doesn't matter if I dent them. It's just easier, a little less tricky to clamp things down without the shims. So, I'm gonna go with that. squirting out as promised so just clean it up clean it up all right so that's our initial clamp for that and then do this guy once again none of these surfaces ever going to see the light of day so i'm just going to put them in approximately positions where i think they're going to balance the amount of force required to clamp these pieces together as good as possible. You should notice that we have a problem. What is our problem? Well, there is no way to uh, put the wings against there. Well, okay, we'll just find something else square then because I don't want to bother with trying to figure out how to do that, to be completely honest. So, we're going to do the best we can. Alright, so you know what I am going to do? So I can already see this one's a little off. You're trying to get these edges absolutely perfectly 100% perfectly, beautifully aligned so that they will glue together to the pine wings in a beauteous, ecstatic orgy of complete flatness and amazing bonding power. So, instead of using the pine wings to square, I am just Rubbing my finger across. You know what that feels like, one continuous edge. The other side, not exactly. Um, but there's no overhang here, so that's as good as it's gonna get. And I'm gonna squeeze this down more. And then as you tighten, you gotta keep going back and checking to make sure that things aren't sliding out of place. Nope. Hey, it actually did scoot over like a tiny hair and it made the other side feel better. So that's good. Feels more square. Feels more like a continuous surface. All right, so these guys. Do you feel square? Do you feel like a continuous surface? Yeah. 
Yeah, it does. Oh, this never goes this well, honestly. I have never had this much uh, luck before clamping these guys to down to each other. I pretty much always have huge issues. But for some reason, it's working this time. <laughs> and when it's on camera, boy, I look a lot more proficient than I really am. Okay. So, so first two glue glue up thingies there. Um, uh, with our tail riser and our our newly minted bevel material block. So. Now we wait a day. Yep. If you had more clamps, you could at least glue the, uh, the neck riser thing to the top. And I did have more clamps, but I sold them at a yard sale. In fact, they were little ones and would have been perfectly suited for that. Oh well. So I guess I'm gonna go watch Justice League now. Wish me luck. Bye. This is not the most complicated clamping setup I've ever come up with, but uh, it's pretty close. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, <clears throat> let me show you what we got here. <clears throat> so this is the this waist here is the narrowest part, so it was the obvious best place to start, but then I couldn't get the back pieces to hold in against the oak core, so I had to do this craziness. Started out with this guy, you know what would have been best probably. some rope uh, paracord and just wrap it around the outside until it was tight. I've had success with that in the past. <coughs> um, but none of these, um, well, this was mission critical for structure anyway, as long as these guys were solid and the pine wings kind of just hang on there for the most part. <clears throat> okay, so now that the wings are on, um, there is a slight height mismatch. And what I, as I was gluing it up, I had to decide whether to bias that toward the front or the back. Well, the top it's much more important that it's flush, um, just because that's the resonating surface of the instrument. So I chose to make the top flush, and that means that the oak core is a tiny little bit lower than the pine wings. <coughs> Let's see if I can. It's like a millimeter. One point five to two millimeter low um, at the back, but less so up here toward the front. Uh, it's maybe half a mil here, then it gets worse toward the back. So that's okay. Like I said, the back it doesn't really matter that much because um, you got this entire solid surface in the back just kind of sticks on it like a veneer. Um, so that's all right. When we glue up the back, what I'll probably do is just put some wood filler in here to seal that. Um, Seal that 1.5 to 2 mil gap, <clears throat> and then you know once we clamp it down, it should be fine. 
Um, test a couple things real quick. Test the alignment of the back. for the uh, access cavity, it should work real nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I could cut out some of this oak core here if I wanted to make it bigger and just leave the corners for the screws, but it seems fine for now. Um, my hand fits in there easily. If we need more space, so I'll, I'll revisit that. Still cool. <coughs> front. So yep, it's looking good. Got a neck riser. sliding out of place 
kind of ice skating on the glue. That, that's, that's what I'm used to see. far enough on so it's sitting strangely. <clears throat> Good. So let that dry up. I said a day yesterday. The bottle says an hour. So I don't know. I gotta go do a bunch of work. So it'll be more than an hour. <coughs> Whatever. Um, not gonna try to glue the back on yet because I want to have all four clamps available. So we'll just wait. Hey. So something finally went right. A little more than expected, because I got my uh, got my cavity covers in the mail. So we uh, get to test fit that before um, gluing the back on, which is good since it doesn't really fit. So once again, test fitting. Only way to know for sure. So, what am I dealing with here? Well, uh, the cutout is it's not quite wide enough. It's too, uh, too deep, left to right. Now we do have a bit of room to play with there because of the uh, overlap. So, yeah, I mean, for dimensions I made up off a picture on the internet, that's not too bad. It does actually sit in the recess. So, uh, so yeah, okay. Um, one thing you'll note is once it's in there, there's no real way to get it out. Well, I guess you can just tip the instrument upside down. Um, and it's not, I mean, you're only going to be in there if something goes wrong because it doesn't have a uh, battery you have to change or anything, so that's probably okay. And, and we'll sand these, these edges, um, you know, round them off and stuff. Okay, so what I'm seeing is everything fits okay except I'm going to want to enlarge these corners a little bit. So that should, should do it.
like there's a bit of a finish point here. Okay, that works. <clears throat> so, we had this drying. So now I need to check and make sure that get that in there with the neck trim in place and oh yeah, it's actually really tight. Sweet. And um neck go. Oh, there we go. I did, I did spray a bit of clear lacquer um, over the areas with the uh, areas with the wood filler just to protect them. The filler's kind of easily damaged. So I'm give it a wee bit of protection. It's, it's, it's turning into an instrument. Okay, so. Um, so we got the top and the back. Now, the top is a really nice snug fit in there, so I'm not, I'm not worried at all about that. Um, so the question is, Glue the top on and the back on simultaneously due to impatience, or do them in two separate passes to make sure we get it right. Let's see the uh, outfit jack and the cavity cover there. That's cool. That's cool. Um, I mean, so the thing is, you know, all these clamps have to go on front and back anyway. So, might as well do it all at the same time, honestly. I don't see, see the arm. And, uh, I'm aligning the back based on my output jack hole. So it's gotta go through both layers. I'm just gonna put a little outline here. Let's see where that's supposed to go. I'll go outline here. Let's see where that's supposed to go. And match those three up, then we should be good. Like I said, the front top is basically holds itself in place due to how tight that uh, that neck riser shim is there. And it's, not, it's not going any place now. However, one thing to note is that uh, that neck riser I mean, I'm going to have to make sure that's clamped down real good around that area because it's a bit of uh, because it's a tight fit or some things, it's a bit squeaky. Okay, so never mind. I'm not gonna do the, the back at the same time. I'm gonna be a good little boy and uh, do them separately. <coughs> <coughs> Though I am going to do the top first now instead of the back. <coughs> 
Wait, no, no. Calm down, Jesse. Calm down. Whew. One thing at a time. What happens has to happen before we put the top on. We gotta route out the air gap where the top will vibrate. So, never mind. Again, the back. The back we can glue on now because we don't have to route anything. We just need to glue it on. So, let's do that. I can sneak this a little to the left because I see to make a difference. So if I scoot it a little bit over there, it'll align, align better with the body. Exactly right. Come back. Enlarge that hole as necessary after gluing. Put that there. As a reminder, moving it over a little bit. It's always you know, last minute little corrections and stuff. Alright. Now the back I said I was gonna put wood filler in here. So put that on, I guess I need to do that. Oops, this is my new wood filler. It's not open yet. Uh -huh. Where's my old wood filler? <laughs> you, you've guessed the, uh, the answer by now. It was on the ground. Sandwich and put glue inside plywood back as well. Put some glue in here. I think they're pretty similar um, substances. I don't think they're gonna interfere with each other. Could be wrong about that. Come on, tell me in the comments. sticking up and might get in the way of this gluing process. Um, just left the outside bits for there for later because we're gonna, once this thing's all together, we're gonna coat the whole deal um, with wood filler anyway, so I'm just gonna have to 
That'll just get sanded off during that process. Yeah. Well, I'm running out of glue, of course. Running out of everything, always. This entire process of had to find more fret zip ties at least twice. Yeah, so whatever it is what it is. If I'd had time to do this before I moved, and I was in my apartment where I knew where everything was, that would have been a much smoother process. But oh well, what you're gonna do. father-in-law he has any glue before I can put the top on. But that's okay. So we've got to route the uh, air gap for the top first. Anyway, okay. So back. Put the back on. Line it with all the ridiculous Sharpie marker drawings that I was doing. Four clamps, so I'll use two for the top area, two for the bottom area, something like that. down the body so that I get a little bit of both, a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom, a little single clamping, should be this benefit. getting the slidey clamp so many times, so many times. All right. So I'm going to scoop this around and actually put this clamp more towards the back. I'm actually going to use like this big piece of wood to kind of get more even pressure all the way across. Lots 
Lots more glue pouring out the back. That's a good sign. So get more pressure on it. It's the ground. See where there might be glue squeezing out. Try to wipe it off. There's some up here. Mm -hmm. Here. All right. Looks like it's good. All right. The batteries for our good audio recorder are charged. I'm using microwavable white castles. These are nerve champions. I don't know what's up with this microwave. There's always cold spots. Pretty gross, I gotta admit. <clears throat> um, so, we glued the back on. That was a while ago. So, pretty sure this is <clears throat> after the hour that the glue bottle says you have to wait. discussed there's actually something we have to do first before we can glue that on and that is to route to route an air air pocket air cavity whatever so the top of the instrument is actually a live top it's a vibrates um, as a result of bowing or plucking the strings and it has to do that in order for the pickup system to be able to register since it is a piezo contact pickup system so it just picks up vibrations of whatever surface it's attached to. Because <clears throat> it's a piezo contact pickup system and it just picks up the vibrations. It just picks up the vibrations of whatever it's attached to. So, need a live top. What does that mean? Well, it means it has to be semi-acoustic. And for an acoustic top to work right, it needs to not be touching anything as much as possible. So, what that means is we need to route out lot of this material in order to give the top room to breathe and move around. With the um, caveat that if we get too close into these scoops, then we're going to have trouble. So where, where primarily do we want to wrap material out from? Well, to route the material out <clears throat> from um, we can we can thin the walls so that there's less material um, 
around the sides of the main circle circle of the body. And then <clears throat> we can route material out of the middle of this bevel, uh, bevel block. Um, you know, kind of cut out the stripe down the middle of that. Um, could also route material out of the, the horn, but I don't know if that's really going to do much of anything really. Most of the action is going to happen down here, so you definitely want to route out um, this section, which I told you you could optionally jigsaw the whole thing out, but we need to route <coughs> enough space so the top doesn't touch in most of this area. But we don't want to go too close to the sides because once everything is glued together, we're going to have to even them out and then bevel the edges and stuff. So, so I wouldn't... Let's look at a ruler. How, how close would I get to the, to the outside? Well, this tail riser is like an inch and a quarter. I wouldn't feel comfortable getting more than... Unless than uh, half an inch is definitely pushing it. Three quarters of an inch, maybe. And as you go into these bevel regions, um, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't get very close at all. Um, probably want to leave. How much room? How much room is there in the top template? It's like an inch and. Inch and a half ish. So, yeah. Oh. I'm gonna draw out some lines, take a look at this. But I don't really expect to remove very much going up into this region. <clears throat> so, before we get going here a note about routers <clears throat> routers are a whole nother breed of power tool like <clears throat> the danger level this is not plugged in by the way that's why my hand is even remotely near this thing the danger level between a drill, jigsaw, and a router, uh, it's it's completely different. The number of RPMs that routers do is is psychotic. This is a very very dangerous tool. So, like, honestly, if you are not highly coordinated and sure of yourself. And your ability to handle a heavy, powerful tool, do not, do not touch a router, please. It's, it, like, it would be so easy to lose a part of your body to this thing, it's not even, it's not even funny. So, um, all that to say, obviously, safety glasses, but extreme caution. Um, the, the router bit, spins so fast um, you have to clamp down the thing that you're cutting because otherwise it literally could throw it across the room I, I'm not kidding I've I may or may not have done it before so um, yeah super careful with the router let's clamp this thing down and get to it but I uh, cannot give you enough warnings about routers super dangerous take your time know what you're doing practice on some scrap wood, get a feel for it, hold the handles very tightly. This thing will often want to get away from you, and you do not want that to happen. Uh, it takes a long time for that thing to stop spinning, and it can do some real harm uh, if it gets anywhere near you, or flesh, or anything. It's, it's, it's an incredibly dangerous thing. It's great. 
pa- it does a lot of good work. It can do things that other tools can't, but it is super dangerous. Okay, I've said my piece. Let's move on. My partner was killed by a router, and I never forgave. I never forget. So like I said, you have to have the piece that you are working on clamped down. <clears throat> it's uh, not optional. So, <clears throat> I'm try to use these internal surfaces so I don't have to worry about them getting messed up. One thing to note, the router um, base is pretty, router bases are pretty big, so you are going to need a lot of clearance, um, clearance from your clamps in order to get into places, so like here for instance, this may not be enough room. <clears throat> have enough enough clearance here to get in and fully cut out this area that I want. Let's see. Uh, might just might just do it. Um, if you don't then you know, just do one section, put the thing aside, reclamp, move stuff. will be plenty far away. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Um, Alright, so I need to figure out what I'm cutting. Well, just so happens, their top template has the Optional, optional pine wings skill saw cutout region, which I'm basically going to be cutting out the same area with the router, except I'm only going to be going uh, half an inch down instead of cutting all the way through the entire inch. Uh, so, skizzors. Skeezers of Air Archu. Skeezers, where did you go? Someone come downstairs and steal my scissors? It's possible. There's a lot of people in this house right now. There's no way to know what, what happens around here, really. I dropped them on the ground like everything else. I don't see them. Alright, well, I guess we'll just do it the old fashioned way. So, I'm just going to. template and kind of put some marks where the dotted line begins and ends and you know it's just honestly going to be easier to just freehand um, you know just keep a pretty uniform you know distance from the edge, <clears throat> and this guy, top template, useful again. So, mark far in. Bevel scoops go on top. Mm-hmm. 
really far. Um, and so I'm, I'm probably only going to be comfortable. Well, you see, it opens back up over here. So maybe I'll try to cut a triangle out there. And triangle here with like a groove through the middle. <clears throat> that seems reasonable. Okay. Safety glasses. And more than safety glasses put on more caution than you use for anything but perhaps, you know, firing a gun. Though, not a, not a handgun, this is more like a, uh, it's more like a fully automatic weapon. If you don't respect it, you can get out of control real easy. Um, another thing to note, I've never used this particular router before. Okay, I'm going to turn the speed all the way down. Uh, the router that I'm used to using had a squeeze trigger on the handle, and so you, you could kind of just go rear, rear, rear not get it up to full speed. This has a speed dial and an on off switch. So I'm gonna start it all the way down to the lowest speed setting. Alright, so did you hear that? So the wood kind of caught funny and it tried to get away from me, but I was holding it firmly with both hands, so it didn't. Still terrifying. This thing melts wood like butter. And I'm only having it on setting two out of six or seven. I'm not going above this. As I'm sure you can see this thing, you know, creates wood particle stuff more than anything else. It just flings it everywhere. Um, okay, so I can't quite get over here as I was fearing might be the case. So rotate the body out some more. Plant this here instead. Room.
All right, so uh, whew, complete honesty, I forgot how terrifying routers are to use, and uh, if I had to make the choice again, I would uh, I would do everything with the jigsaw. Um, up to you. Show you. I'm showing you both ways, but uh, yeah. I'm not gonna be sad to never use one of those again. One more router for me, thanks. I'm, I'm done. Let's go back to gluing things. That's, that's a much nicer, kinder, gentler pace of thing to do. Um, <coughs> so. <coughs> now, I can glue this top on. Remember, I have the uh, neck riser in there. <coughs> yep, yep, fits great. Let's, uh, let's try to blow out a little bit more. <coughs> Don't really want stuff trapped in there. I mean, we have the, the access door, obviously, but it's only going to get us so far. <coughs> okay. So. Let's glue the top on, shall we? Okay. All right, so mom is texting me currently, asking if I'm gonna go see <coughs> Solo, a Star Wars story, whatever its final title ended up being. Answer: Probably not. I'm busy making this video for you guys. <coughs> yes, feel bad. Go ahead, feel bad. It's all right. I'm cool with it. All right, this is Gorilla wood glue, which I've never used before. Hopefully, it's not different. Normal wood glue, I guess we're gonna find out. It's not coming out, that's problem number one. Shame that was off camera. It squirted up into the air and I screamed like a little girl. It was pretty great. Um, at least you heard it. Imagine it. <laughs> All right, so glue is coming out. It's a good first step. Let's see what we got going on here. So I'm gonna apply glue to every surface. It's gonna be glued to another surface. Even if I'm not 100% sure that he's going to touch it, such as the back side of that guy. Still gonna put glue on it. Mm -hmm. See, pure imagination just keeps coming back. I don't know, man. My former co workers heard that a lot. Sorry, Kimberly. Very sorry. At least you had the decency to point out every time I did it. Hee <laughs> hee.
fascinating ways of glue application. Bet you are just, whew, you are excited. Oops, I meant to, I meant to chop those off on this side. I don't want those protruding because they kind of get in the way of the uh, top a little bit. Uh, I should pull the router back out, but I'm scared of it. So. That worked. Sawdust in my glue, that's probably not good. Probably get in the way of uh, interfere with the bond somewhat. No boo on it. Yep, that's everything on that side. So they're at least entertaining. <sighs> okay. All right, so all of all of this dude needs coverage. I'm looking at what I got here. So I got this triangle guy there where there's not going to be any glue, but I have the edges. There does need to be glue. This opens up, and yeah, I didn't need it there. Oh well. Just gonna wipe that off. Yep. I don't want, I don't want the back all gummed up with glue that doesn't need to be there. It's not gonna be good for, for vibrating. Yeah, I know it's just plywood, but it, it's still the it's still the engine for sound of the instrument regardless, so we need to respect it. So without the top vibrating, the instrument makes no sound, and then there's no sound to go into the pickup system, and then through the cable, and then into your amp or recording setup or whatever, so respect the top top is everything. <clears throat> Righto. So, yep, that looks right. So far, clamp time. All right, what are we, what are we gonna use? Got that nice long piece that worked out pretty good. Um, you know, and I have this other nice long oak piece here. And I have a long side of the instrument. Short side of the instrument, so yeah, it's, it's almost like it was meant to be or something. So we're gonna do that. <clears throat> Oops, right. A reminder, Jesse, that there's nothing on the bottom except the back of the instrument, which we don't want to dent. How much do I not want to dent it? Um. Struggling to not want to dent it enough. Okay, 
All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do the right thing. <clears throat> That hasn't happened on camera yet. Heard all the time. Honestly. Ask my wife. That's about as good as we're gonna do with these four clamps. Um, not too stoked about. I feel like this board is a little, a little too far away from the edge. I feel like it's not really getting that edge very well. So let's get that over there. Just a little bit. squeezing out. Let's see. Can't get to all of it because the boards and stuff will be blocking it, but I just want to get most of it. <clears throat> and all these uh, all these seam lines, I'm just gonna be sanding them down anyway, so yeah. not really a biggie. Okay, so, time for that to dry. Guess I'll go find something else to do with myself for the rest of the night. See you tomorrow. All right, all right, all right. 
this. It's like giving giving a Christmas present to yourself. I'm unclamp. A fully glued up body. Whoop, whoop. This is where you hope that you didn't screw anything up. Oh wait, that's every stitch. This is fully glued down. It's quite tonal, actually. Much more so than uh, than just the board hanging out by itself, and that's because you know it's completely glued down all the way around. 